This is the second screencast in a series about molecular theories of kinetics for CME650 at the University of Kentucky. And we're going to begin by talking about kinetic theory. This is the theory from which collision theory comes from, and it's to give you a flavor for where some of the relationships originate. So the uh, starting point, or a reasonable starting point, is to think about having n molecules of mass m in a box of length l. So this is a cubic box, and we're just going to consider collisions with the walls of the box, which are completely elastic. So these particles are moving along, a particle such as this one, with a velocity in a particular direction, say in the x direction of velocity for particle n in the x direction. That's the initial component of momentum, or of velocity, in that direction. And after the collision, it's going to have a velocity of negative velocity in that direction. So it didn't lose any energy and it was just an elastic collision. So if we look in that x direction, the momentum change associated with that collision is two times the mass of the particle times the original velocity of that particle. And the force is going to be the change in momentum over a time interval. And we, if we consider delta t to be the time between collisions, and that's going to be the length of the box divided by the velocity of this particle, and for now we're just assuming it has a constant velocity, then the force would be given by the momentum change over the time interval, which then is given by two times the mass, times the velocity in the x direction of that particle squared over the length of the box. And we have similar magnitudes of the force in the y and z directions because this is symmetric. We don't have to worry about gravity or any other force. So with that in mind, the pressure exerted by the nth particle is going to be the force per unit of area. So that's going to be 2 times the mass over the length times the sum of the squares of the velocities in each direction divided by 6 times the length squared because that's 6 times the area of one face of the cube and carrying out the math and assuming that the average velocity is the same in each direction we get the mass times the square of the velocity over three times the volume of the box. Then when we have n particles total the total pressure exerted by those n particles is just going to be um, m over three times the volume that doesn't change from particle to particle times the sum over all the particles of the square of the velocity and using the definition of the average that would be the mass times the number of particles over three times the volume of the box times the average of the square of the velocity. Now we assume that the speeds follow a continuous distribution and so the average value of the velocity squared is given by the integral over all possible velocities, so going from zero to infinity, of the square of the velocity times the probability distribution function or the probability density for the velocity. So, for example, the average translational kinetic energy, which is given by n times e, is n times the average value of epsilon. That represents the, the kinetic energy. And uh, the kinetic energy of one particle is given by one half the mass times the square of the velocity. So that multiplied by the probability distribution function should give us this, this function. And um, from other results, or I guess basically from above, because we know the relationship between the average of the square and the velocity and the pressure, we can say that the average of the square of the velocity is 3 times PV over M times N. And so the total translational kinetic energy of the system is given by 3 halves PV. So that's here. Now this came just from this simple idea of looking at elastic collisions with the walls of particles with constant velocity. And they have some distribution of velocities, but we don't know what it is yet. But we have this relationship between kinetic energy and pressure and volume of the system. So from the ideal gas law then, um, using the relationship between PV and the temperature of the system, we can say that the average energy is given by 3 halves the Boltzmann's constant times temperature. And that's 3 halves PV over N. And so the average of the square of the velocity is 2 over m times the average energy, and that's 3 times kt over the mass of the particles. So that's a significant result, and it allows us to basically 
keep in mind that the temperature, or Kb times temperature, is proportional to the square of the velocity for a system. Now what about this probability density for velocities? We need to assume something about this, this function. So in Houston 1.5 it's discussed a little bit more, but what we'd like to know is a function of the velocity components um, being equal to the, the probability of observing a particular velocity between vx plus dvx, vy plus vdy, and vz plus vdz. That's the three-dimensional probability density for the velocities of the system. In each direction, we expect to have equal probability of moving in either direction. There's no reason that it would be otherwise. And so, for, so the f of vx would be the f of the opposite of vx, for example. And we also assume that the velocity distributions are independent in each direction. So this total probability density is given by the product of the probability in the x direction times the y direction times the z direction. These are even distributions, which is this property above. And so f of vx should be given by a, another function, but it's a function of the square of the velocity because it only depends on the magnitude of the velocity and a way to ensure that we have that is this lowercase f. So we need this function of a plus b plus c to be equal to the function of v squared, which is the product of f of a plus f of b plus f of c, or times, sorry, multiplied together. And we need to show whether or not this makes sense, but one function that would fulfill all of these requirements is if f of vx equals lowercase f of vx squared is an exponential. So it would be a constant times the exponential of another, the opposite of another constant times the square of the velocity. This will satisfy all of these requirements. So for example, if we have vx squared plus vy squared plus vz squared being in this function, it would be given by the product of those three. That's one property of exponentials that we can use. Also, it's an even function. And so this is basically the argument for why probability densities for velocities follow an exponential. And if we normalize that exponential, we should have the, at the integral from over all possible possible values of velocity of this probability density should be one, and it's an exponential. We can evaluate this integral. There's a table in Houston. You can find it, I'm sure, in other sites online. But if we take the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of the exponential of the opposite of kappa times the variable squared, it's given by the square root of pi over kappa. So what this tells us is that the value of k, which appears here, this normalization constant, is the square root of kappa over pi. And so that basically allows us then to say what our distribution should be. We also know that the distribution should agree with the ideal gas law. So we expect that the average value of the square of the velocity of the system should be given by three times the average of the square of the velocity in one direction, since it's three dimensional. And that's given by three times kbt over m. If we take the definition of the average and we use the proposed probability density function, which is this exponential, and then we normalize it with this term in front, and again use table 1.1 to evaluate this integral, which now contains the square of the variable that's being integrated, we get that the average of the square of the velocity in the x direction is 1 half times k kappa over pi to the 1 half power times pi over kappa cubed to the 1 half power. And if we simplify that expression, we get 1 over the product of 2 times kappa. So with that in mind, we can give a physical explanation of what kappa means. So kappa is the mass of a particle over 2 kbt. And with that in mind, we can then say what this distribution is. So the probability density for a velocity x is given by this function. This is the Maxwell distribution, and it's common in kinetic theory. So it's the square root of the mass over 2 pi kbt multiplied the, by the exponential of negative mvx squared over 2 kbt, dvx because it's a differential function. And we can also show that if we're looking in the vx, vy, and vz three-dimensional set of coordinates, this is the probability density that we should have, which is actually more useful. Now we can then use that to say what the speed distribution is of our system and what the energy distribution is.
So the speed, we can make use of the fact that dvx dvy dvz is equal to 4 pi v squared times dv, where v represents the magnitude of that velocity vector, so it's the speed of the system. And we can show, based on the prior slide, what's there, that the probability density for a speed is given by this function, which look, looks very similar to what was on the previous slide, except we only have one variable, which is the magnitude of the speed. And using that, we can say, for example, the average velocity of the system is given by the speed times the probability density integrated over all possible values. And that gives us this quantity, the square root of 8 kBT over pi times the mass. And then using the fact that the average energy of the system, or actually the kinetic energy, is given by mv squared over 2. The differential of the energy is given by mass v dv. And that is equal to the square root of twice the mass times epsilon dv. And that gives us a probability density for energies. These are kinetic energies of particles. And we can call this g instead of using f just to make it a distinct function. But it represents a probability density again. And it's the probability that the energy of a particle is between epsilon and epsilon plus d epsilon. And it's given by this function. So you can see it depends on the exponential of the opposite of epsilon over kbt. But it's multiplied by the square root of epsilon. So we can have not only a probability distribution function for velocities, but also for energies of particles. Now, we can use this then to derive col collision theory. And again, to keep these videos short, I'm going to save that for the next one.